Hello friends and welcome to Edgefield. Here right by the beautiful town square. Doing a little work today at the library. We come in here often. We're working on the permit paperwork for the electrical, plumbing. It's about all we're gonna be doing right now. There might be some gas service later on. I'll show you some of this, what I've been working on, and show you how well not so difficult it really is. It's a really nice library. Here we go. I'm just doing the final review. Hopefully, that's one of the last times I have to come over here to the library to do this paperwork. I am really excited to turn this stuff in finally. It's, it's been a long time coming. I don't have far to go. I just have to go over there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. Heck yeah. Permit office. Oh, I've been wanting to show up here with this paperwork for a long time. Now when we get back, I'll show you some of the details about this. And if you're intimidated by this whole process, well, don't be. It's, it's really not that difficult to accomplish this. And with the help of Google, believe me, anybody, anybody can do this. There might be some revisions and you know, complications that come up, but maybe not. We'll see. All good so far. Uh, the, the permit man's a nice guy. I came down and quizzed him and had a really nice long conversation with him about what to do, what not to do, what was allowed. So that was extremely helpful. That really was motivating because I too was very intimidated by this whole process. I was thinking, man, you know, I'm not a HVAC guy. I know electrical, but even drawing up plans for electrical, plumbing, HVAC, that's all like, I like doing the work. I'm not much of a paperwork guy, but it turns out it's really not that hard. If you go on Google, you can, so you can search for symbols and things that you need to put in a drawing. Really all you have to do is put on paper the instructions that you could follow, just as simple as you could follow to accomplish the task. So that's what I did. I just put in the way I thought that the electrical should go, the way I thought the plumbing should go, and then uh, drew it up. Easy as that. I'm back here at the bank going over some paperwork while Sarah and I patiently wait for a call from the building and planning department and was reminded that this was a great time to give thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Bombas Socks. Friends, it's sock season, and if you are the sock giver of the family or friend group, well, you know already that Bombas is the ultimate choice for socks. They are long lasting. They are the most comfortable socks. You are gonna love these. You're never gonna wanna take these off. And our friends at Bombas gifted us some socks. So Sarah, here's Yay. yours. I think those are mine. Oh, these are yours. <laughs> These belong to me. We're going to put these on. I'm going to, I'm going to wear these. I'm going with the cashmere blends. Mm. I'm super excited about these. <laughs> You've got the bright colored one. <laughs> wow. <Ooh. laughs> I'm trying on the Hextech they're a performance running sock. I don't run, but I'm really happy with them. They're extremely comfortable, more than what I anticipated. Which socks did you try on? I have on a cashmere blend, which are super comfy and cozy. Friends, if you are looking for the perfect gift this season, don't look any further. Go to bombas.com backslash Dre's World, and you will find a ton of great gifts for your friends and family, and even for yourself. Don't forget, you can give gifts to yourself. Something really cute that my mom has done in the past, and I've actually stolen a few times, um, she'll give a gift of socks uh, to give glad tidings of comfort and joy. So a pair of socks as the comfort part of the gift, and then a bottle of wine, spirits, maybe a bottle of champagne as the joy. And you're not only giving to your family and friends. Back in 2013, the founders of Bombas learned that the most requested item in homeless shelters were socks. So what they did was founded a company that when you order a pair of socks, a pair of socks is donated to a shelter in need. And not just the socks, it's also t-shirts and underwear and other items 
it's a really great gift that you are giving to somebody out there that needs a pair of these, and you are gonna get the gift of comfort from Bombas. So far, they've actually given away more than 100 million items. That is a ton. That's more than a ton. So many tons, given away. And if for any reason you are not happy with these, which I can't imagine why, or your cat eats them, or your dog, or whatever pet you have that eats socks, <laughs> you can return them or exchange them. It's a great plan. And since our friends at Bombas are so kind, they are gonna give you 20% off of your order if you go to bombas.com backslash Dre's World and use the code Dre's World at checkout. 20% off of your entire order. Well, that's, that's all the sock talk for today. <laughs> Got to get back to, to going over some of this paperwork. There might be some revisions coming up, so we want to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. All right. I like the cover page. Guess I can get rid of my reminder note now. <laughs> well, about 30 minutes ago, I received an email that stated my paperwork was ready to be picked up. So I was able to pay for it online. The total cost for all the permitting was 750 four dollars fifty two dollars something like that so you can prepay and then just come pick it up so uh, assuming before i go in here i'm just assuming that everything was approved and that would be a really good feeling a really good feeling <laughs> i've been looking forward to for a long time Whew. good how are you I'm here to pick up some uh, paperwork for my permit okay, okay. Check it out, friends. I'm standing here waiting for the paperwork. Look at this. It's a picture of our building. This you'll need to take to the courthouse and get it recorded and bring it back to us. Right on. We'll All do. Right. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Uh, the courthouse is right here. I didn't even have to drive. Really, I don't even know why I got in my car and drove. I should have walked. That was painless. Once I got cash, which I didn't have, I had to walk down to the ATM. Uh, they don't accept carts. Be prepared for that if you're here in this county. Uh, once I got that, it was easy. I had to wait about two minutes for them to do the recording. And in the meantime, I thought, wow, there's a lot of old books here I see on a rack. I'm sure that this is where you get the history of the building. So sure enough, once I uh, inquired, they were very willing to do some research for us on the building. So uh, they were able to go back to 1930, and then they gave me the number of a local archivist that would have more information going further back so I'll have to contact her and, uh, and find more history so this has turned out to be a really great day and easier experience than what I thought when I first went into it and that's it Walls are open. So, Everything's ready to just be installed. Yep, yeah, whenever you get everything roughed in, give us a call. We'll come out the next day and look at it. And then once you put up your insulation, we'll come out the next day and look at that. And then your sheetrock and everything, cover it all up. We'll do what's called a final power inspection and then we'll be done. Cool. Yep. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Track. Everything passed. No problem. Drawings are perfect. All right. That's really nice. Now it's, uh, it's time to show you what those drawings were, how I did it, and how it's not not that difficult. Official stamp and stuff right there. Welcome to my desk, friends. This used to be a laundry folding table at the Jones laundromat that was left here in the building for us. And this is just an old desktop that Sarah had sitting around. So it makes it a lot easier to draw and do things on. 
I wanted to show you what we began the permit process with, and that was this drawing, which is the layout of the upstairs and the downstairs, what we projected that it would look like originally. We took measurements of everything and uh, even up to the details of the windows, how far above the, the floor they were, how big they were, so I could properly put it all in to the computer. And then we were given this information from Dominion Energy, which uh, just explains where the meter can is and how high the attachment points have to be for power coming in. And then we have the requirements for the meter can, which is all pretty basic stuff. And then that transferred into this, which uh, it, it was a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. So I made a nice cover page here and uh, that was just for the department people to be able to identify it quickly. And we began all of this with the gas. We have gas, electric, and plumbing all involved in this permit. Let me show you this uh, up close. Before I show you this all in detail, I wanna let you know that I used a website called floorplanner.com to create most of this. They don't sponsor this video, but they were very helpful in making this happen. I also use Microsoft Word for a lot of the two-dimensional pages like you'll see here first on the gas uh, diagram. Uh, that was really easy to use and accessible to most people. Uh, floorplanner.com does cost a couple bucks, but it's really helpful. And when I say a couple bucks, I mean literally two to five dollars for different features. It's all a la carte and reoccurs every month as long as you're using it. You can cancel it any time. But the cool thing about Floor Planner is it does everything to scale. You type in all of your measurements, your window sizes, everything, and it turns that into a 3D image instantly. So that is really helpful to show people what your vision is, what you're trying to accomplish. That's been helpful for me to explain things to Sarah. And when she has an idea, I can type it into Floor Planner and we can see it in 3D and make some decisions and modifications based on that. So that was really awesome. So you'll see a mix of that in this packet. Now let me show you what we, what we came up with. We're gonna start with the gas because it's the most basic. I was given instructions by another gentleman at Dominion Energy to tell me exactly what they expected to see when they came out. So that, that was pretty basic. And I made this as easy to understand as possible by putting the size of the pipe and the type of pipe, the black iron, uh, what the fittings were going to be, and then the height away from the the floor. This is just the back room. We're going to have an uh, attachment point for the heater. That's the only thing we're going to attach and then make some space for other things in the future, whatever those might be. The next is the plumbing. This is just a basic plumbing diagram. It tells you where the vanity, toilet, shower is, and of course, well, they're all contained in the bathroom. And then I labeled what the rooms are. This is just phase one. We, we may continue on to build some other parts of this, and I'll show you that in just a moment. This is phase one plumbing. This is the water lines, and that is identified by the red and the blue. That's very common, but what you may not know is that sanitary lines are typically green, so this is the sanitary line that will be vented. VTR means vent through roof, and that's the symbol for it. I just found that symbol online. This is the, the first phase diagram of the sanitary lines for upstairs and the water lines. And it's even labeled here where the stub outs will be for the kitchen sink on the other side of the wall. Phase two plumbing, you'll notice there are three extra rooms that we possibly will add in the future. A closet, bathroom, and laundry, those require water service and drainage. So you, you can easily see on the diagram where another vent will go through and it's two inches, the washing machine outlet, it not only helps the building department understand what's going on, but it helps us when we're trying to build the system remember where everything goes. I even broke it down into just the water supply and just the sanitary lines. That's phase one of the sanitary lines and phase two of the sanitary lines and identifying each uh, component of the system. Next, we're moving into the electrical part of the process. This is my favorite part to design and build. We're gonna begin with temporary power. This is the back room. Right about here is where the heater is hanging. And you'll, you'll notice here a 100 amp load center. There's a 100 amp electrical panel with two power outlets down here. One's 220 and a, a switch to a light and the power to the gas 
heater. And that's all we're going to have at first. And this is the outside view of what that is. This is existing power coming in and our existing meter, which I clearly labeled there. And I gave dimensions of, of the heights of those. In case there was any problem, we might have to change that to bring it up to code, but it turns out it was okay. And these are some pictures I took just in case there was any question uh, it's prior to hanging the heater. But right there's where the new panel is going to go. Moving back to the outside of the building, this is where the permanent power will come in. At 20 feet is the attachment point. I've already attached that, and we have 18 feet where the weather head is, is attached. We'll come right down to the meter. And I made this red to signify the difference between the power, the energized power, and the ground. There's two ground rods that will be required for this system. Here's the inside. It comes in from that meter up to the ceiling and then jogs across and it's going to shoot up in the ceiling here. This is just going to be power for the upstairs only. Here's where it gets exciting to me. Lights are going to start coming on very soon permanently. You'll see that signified here in the living room and in the hallway. We have a couple other lights that will be controlled by switches and this system will grow eventually. There'll be other lights attached to it but we will begin by installing everything here in the bathroom and the outlets are signified by that symbol there and vent fan is signified by the VF. Any of these circles with the little dashes on it, those are lights. Phase two electric gets a little more complicated. The rooms don't exist up here yet, but in phase three they do. If we do get to this point and we decide that these are going to be installed in the property, then this is what it will look like. Uh, it looks complicated, but it really is not that complicated, especially since the lines are color-coded. The smoke detectors with the S in the center, those are clearly marked. It shows exactly where they will come to the load center. The electric panel will be installed right here, and everything will go from that central location out. I thought that would be the best use of wire. We would use less wire doing it that way, and there'll be easier access to get to that load center if uh, breaker trips. We're almost done with the packet. Here is the load center diagram. Everything in red is what will be in phase three, but everything without the line through it is what we're putting in right now. I will put them in these exact spots so we can plan ahead. And this is what it's going to look like. And at the bottom, I labeled what the breaker panel serial number is, exactly what we're using, and the breakers that we're going to be loading the panel with. Lastly, we had to include the plat map, which shows the measurements of the building and any restrictions, easements that the county requires. Here's a sidewalk. We can't go past these marks that are written. And that's just to show in case we were doing any outside work or extending into that area that uh, what we're allowed to do and what we're not, according to the county. And in this case, we're doing everything on the inside, so it really didn't matter, but we had to show this anyway. If all this still seems kind of complicated, well, I understand, because not many people have the need or the opportunity to have to draw up plans for any kind of major project like this. But if you do, well, now you know that it's totally possible to do on your own. You don't necessarily have to hire somebody to do that, especially on a, on a smaller project. But if you have a project that you'd like to tackle, you've been putting off for a long time, you just are overwhelmed, it's in your blind spot, well, just go ahead and start drawing it up. Go get some measurements, and the more you just plug at it, it'll come together. Especially if you're using a website like floorplanner.com or just Microsoft Word to put it together. If you have the Adobe Suite or any of those Adobe products, you could find a way to do that on there as well. I am kind of versed in that, but not enough to come up with something this detailed, so it really helped to have a pre-made program like Floor Planner to make this all happen. If you got a project like this, I'd like to hear how you put it together yourself. If you just drew it up by hand or if you used a specific website. If you know of a free website out there, well, let me know. It's, it's so cheap to use a lot of these online uh, sources that it just it makes a lot of sense. I really appreciate you joining me in this process and on this excellent day when everything has finally been approved. Now it's time to get to work, the real work. Uh, not that this isn't real work. This took a lot of planning, a lot of thinking, but we got a lot of, of stuff to do. And it's going to take a while. 
Friends, I'm really glad you're here joining Sarah and I on this adventure at the old Bank of Johnston. This is a major step in the right direction. And I can't wait to have you along for all these parts and pieces to make this all come together. Thanks for joining me today, friends. I'll see you in the next video.